guys so uh, <clears throat> during the live sessions we learned about uh, uh, the classical definition of probability and uh, we learned about its limitations so you know that classical definition of, uh, definition of probability is only applicable to events that are equally probable and mutually exclu exclusive right uh, since it is limited to such events uh, we want another definition uh, on probability so then we learn about uh, axiomatic definition of probability so in there we learn about three axioms and uh, based on these three axioms we learn uh, that there are uh, five theorems that we can use okay now so this is another thing so uh, now we are basing on axiomatic definition of probabilities and this is another theorem okay so this theorem this is called the conditional probability so what is a conditional probability first we'll look into that a conditional probability means simply put uh, suppose there are two events right so if you want to know the influence of the first event on the second event then we go for conditional probability right the name suggests there's a condition conditional probability there's a condition what is the condition the first an event has already occurred if that event has already occurred then what is the chance of the next event happening when that event has already occurred so that is what a conditional probability uh, probability is all about simply put. Right. so let a and b be two events and if we want to know the influence of event a on b or vice versa we use conditional probability this is where we use conditional probability for example suppose sri lanka won the first match and then we want to know what is the chance of sri lanka winning again in the second match so first match they already won the first match what is chance of or what is the probability of them winning the match for the second time suppose they lost the first match then what is the chance of them winning the second match those are conditional probability okay so notation this is how we write it p for probability then within a parenthesis you write b a so this is the first event here you write the first event the event has that has already occurred then you write the next event right so this this basically implies uh, influence of a on b so when you write it like this this is a conditional probability conditional probability means uh, uh, conditional probability tells you what is the influence of this event on b so if you write it in this way this tells you what is the influence of event b on a so influence of b on a this is what conditional probability is all about so how do you read this conditional probability notation this is how you read it so i will do it for b a you read it as probability or conditional probability probability of b so if i want probability of b this is it right this means probability of b but this is not we want this is not what we want we want probability of b given right whenever you see this word it actually means conditional probability it means uh, that means you have to refer to this notation probability of b given a has occurred a has already occurred right so if you write it like this probability of a given b this is how you write right probability of a given b so probability of a happening given b has already occurred b has already happened right so this is the notation so let's uh, look at some of the examples uh, under conditional probability so that you will learn where we can use this theorem Right, so uh, this is some uh, three of the examples I could come up with. 
uh, look at the first example probability that it will rain tomorrow given that it rained today suppose it rained today and what is chance of it raining tomorrow as well so that is a condition of probability is there influence okay so usually there is an influence so we can write it like this probability of given so we write this first given rain today this has already occurred rain tomorrow this is a conditional probability so we don't usually write it like this we use capital letters to denote that next one probability of winning second match given they won the first match given right given they won the first match so probability of winning the second match given they won the first match so they won the first match this has already occurred what is the probability of them winning the second match so we can put 1 and 2 here just to imply that this is the first scenario this is the second scenario so we can just write it like this uh, if you are familiar with the notation then you know about this one, right so this means probability of winning the second match or winning uh, for the second time given they won the first match then probability of being late to the class this is uh, this is something that you experience in daily life so suppose you have Uh, different modes of transportation now you won't go to school some people would take the bus some people would uh, take a, a private car or an uber or they would uh, choose you know a van you know that a school van so given a certain mode of transportation what is the chance of you being late to the class so that is also a conditional given for example probability of given you took the bus let's denote it as b right b for bus what is chance of you being late to the class right so these are uh, some of the examples that i could come up with and uh, the notations okay so now uh, we'll uh, look at the definition of conditional probability right so this is the definition of conditional probability is very important that you know that you learn this theorem uh, the uh, learn, learn the formula here this is probability of a given b right as we learn this is equal to, how do you calculate this condition probability you can calculate it by uh, probability of a intersection b divided by probability of b right for example now here you can see that if this is b the event that has already occurred then you should have probability of b here if you write it like this probability of b given a in this case the formula should be probability of a intersection b is the same thing always the intersection i could write b intersection a but it's the same thing as saying a intersection b divided by since this is the event that has already occurred so we have put p a in the denominator okay so learn the uh, definition so in here you put the event that has already occurred here you put the event yet to occur right so learn the definition okay now uh this is equivalent to saying now you learned about classical definition of probability in classical definition we uh, define the classical probability as the number of elements of a certain event divided by number of elements of the sample space so we can use this formula to find the conditional probability if these are given separately or we can find it separately or if we are using a venn diagram or just listing out the sample space then we can use this technique as well number of elements in a intersection b divided by number of elements in b okay so you can use either method if it is uh, if we are given a venn diagram or if you know a way to find the number of elements or right, number of uh, yeah number of outcomes in a certain event then you can use this right or if you can directly find these value well, probability of a intersection b probability of b a or whatever then you can use this formula 
Now let's see where do we get this uh, theorem from. Let's refer to the Venn diagram for ex, uh, for a moment. Now in a Venn diagram you can uh, represent sets, right? So there can be overlap between two sets. So now in this region, this part of the region, this tells you, or this number N1 tells you only A, right? Only A elements. Elements only in A. That means these elements, these N1 number of elements has nothing to do with B, right? It has everything to do with A only. What about this? N2, both a and b right so these n2 number of elements represent both a and b right so if one of these elements occurred that means it refers to both a and b it represents both a and b sets what about this one only b element so n3 has everything to do with b right it has nothing to do with A elements. So N4 has nothing to do with either one of these events. Right? So that is, a, that, that is the basically uh, uh, what it means by representing numbers in Venn diagrams. So we can either represent all the elements in the Venn diagram or just the number, just like this. Okay. Now, we can define probability of A happening, suppose N1 plus N2 plus N3 plus N4 equals N, in that case, probability of A happening. When you say A happening means N1 and N2, they both contribute to A, right? So N1 plus N2 divided by capital N, the total number. Probability of B, probability of B means N2 plus N3, Right? Addition of these two numbers divided by A. Right? Because N2 and N3, they both represent B. Right? What about A intersection B? A intersection B means this part refers to uh, the number of elements. Right? Number of elements that represent both A and B. So that would be N2. Since it's the probability, we have to divide it by capital N. Okay. Now, we, this is just basic probabilities. Suppose, now we want conditional probability. Right? In conditional probability, let's represent this one. Probability of give, uh, B given A. Now, when you say probability of B given A, that means... A has already occurred. A has already occurred. So we will never, we, we don't need the N3 and N4 because we know for sure A has already occurred. Now in this case, your whole universe is squeezed into N1 plus N2. Only this region. Earlier your whole universe was this, the whole thing, universe is set. But now in this case, Given A, A has already occurred. This means A has already occurred. Already occurred. Right? Then you only refer to A. So I'm just going to put A, uh, just draw A with a continuous line. But I'm not going to represent B or anything else because it doesn't matter to us. Now you can see that part of B still remains inside A. Part of B still remains inside A. Now what is that part? This is N1 and N2. Okay. Right. Now A has already occurred. A has already occurred. Then what, what, what do we need? So this means A has already occurred implies one of the elements elements of N1 plus N2 has occurred. Okay. This has occurred, then what is the chance of that element is in this region because these N2 elements, N2 number of elements, they represent both A and B. So in this case, 
probability of B given A, we can use it in terms of these numbers. Now our total number would be N1 plus N2. So we write N1 plus N2 here. Okay. Then out of these, how many would represent B? So O contributes to B. So N2. Okay. This is a number. This is actually saying N2 means number of A intersection B divided by N1 plus N2 refers to number of elements in A. Remember our definition. Should remember our definition. Now, this is what I am going to do. So, look at this one carefully. Now, I am going to divide this whole thing by capital N. This and this. So, N a intersection B divided by capital N, N A divided by capital N. Or we can do it here. So N2 divided by cap N A intersection B means N2, N2 divided by capital N. So what is N2 divided by capital N? N2 divided by capital N is this guy is probability of A intersection B. So what about this one? N A means N1 plus N2. N1 plus N2 divided by N1 plus N2 divided by N. What is that? N1 plus N2 divided by N means probability of A. Right. See? So this is where conditional probability came from. So whenever it says something has already occurred, then your whole universe becomes that something, the first event. Like in this case, your whole universe become A, then out of these elements, what is the chance of getting an element that represent B as well? Right, so this is the definition. Right, so uh, please make a note on this. Probability of A given B is not defined when P, B is 0. So what is probability of A given B? P A given B, the definition is P A intersection B divided by P B. Now you can see that if P B is 0, then this becomes infinitely large. So what does that mean? In other words, it means this cannot occur. Okay? Because P A given B means this implies B event has already occurred. If probability of B occurring is 0, then there is no chance of B occurring. So, this is meaningless. This is meaningless. So, we have to make sure that when you're taking P A given B or conditional events, the first event has a chance of occurrence. So similarly, B given A is not defined when P A is equal to 0. Now, the second one is, is very important when you're dealing with uh, uh, two trials or more trial experiments like tossing a coin twice or three times or four times without writing down the sample space without uh, noting down all the outcomes we can get the probability or certain probability suppose i want what is the chance of heads appearing three times h h h i can get this answer right away without referring to the sample space or suppose you want to pick balls from a, a box that contains several number of balls and uh, you want to take uh, pick two balls or three balls one after the other without replacing it back right without replacing it back then uh, without uh, I mean without writing down the sample space or anything you can get that answer using this condition conditional limits right so probability of A intersection in that case probability of h h h that means three heads appearing this is equal to saying probability of h and h and h right first event second event third event so this is actually this comes under conditional events as well right but simplicity let's uh, restrict ourselves to two heads right two twice coin tossing experiment then h h implies this means actually H and H. This means H and H. First head, second time also head. So both heads had already occurred. That's why we use intersection. Now in this case, we can write 
probability of h right first coin being uh, first coin showing you h into probability of second coin is also h given the first coin is h this is how you can use this theorem okay so please make a note on this we can uh, uh, we will definitely use these things in uh, solving problems so let, let's look at some examples now prove the following probability of null set given a has already occurred so what is the chance of happening nothing after a has already occurred that is zero because there is no chance of happening nothing at all in, in an experiment that's how you define it as so we can use the definition null set given a probability of null set intersection a divided by probability of a so when you take the intersection uh, between null set and any event that is equal to the null set right divided by probability of a so probability of null set is equal to zero you know that from the axiomatic, de axiomatic definition this is zero divided by p a so the answer is zero so let's uh, look at another example now. Right, let's prove this. Probability of B prime given A has already occurred. That means, what is the chance of B not happening given A has already occurred? So you remember, this is that A, B, right? N1, N2, N3, the whole thing. Given A has already occurred. So this has already occurred. We will not worry about this part. What is the chance of B not happening? So if N2 elements happens, then that is the chance of B happening. If N1 elements happen, that is the chance of not B happening. So N1 divided by N1 plus N2 is the answer. But let's show this. Right. How do you prove it? First start off with this one b complement given a then it should be probability of b complement intersection a divided by probability of a right so what is probability of a intersection b prime so you know this from the theories this is equal to probability of a minus probability of a intersection b so divided by probability of a now I'm going to break this into two parts. So P A divided by P A, then minus P A intersection B divided by P A. Right. So this is equal to 1. And what is this equal? This is the definition now. Probability of B given A. There I prove it. Okay. Right. So let's look at another example. So these are the types of examples that you can expect in part A, right? So uh, learn this. In usual notation, probability of A is given as 3 by 5. They will give you this data. Probability of A intersection B is 1 third. And probability of, this is a condition of probability, A given B is equal to 4 by 9. And we are asked to find the following. So let's start off with a simple one, probability of A complement. You know how to find uh, the probability of A complement given A. Uh, A is already given. So this is 1 minus PA. So the answer is very straightforward. 1 minus 3 over 5. Answer is 2 by 5. Very easy to. Then probability of B given A. A given B is, uh, is already there. What is the probability of B given A? Now, Go back to uh, the definition. So the definition say probability of B intersection A divided by probability of A. This guy already happened. Now we see whether we have these information. Probability of A is there. It's given. What about this? Probability of uh, B intersection A. That is equal to probability of A intersection B. So all are given. So 1 by 3 divided by probability of B a is 3 by 5. So the number is 5 out of 9. Right. The next one. What do you think? PB. Now his thing. If they have given you probability of A union B, 
then we can use addition rule that means p a into b equals p a plus p b minus p a into section b because p a is given p a into section b given if p a union b has already given then we can use that theorem uh, to find p b but p a and b is not given so what is given there's another uh, information here we didn't use it so far so probability of a given b now in your mind you should know that probability of a given b whenever you see that you should know this is equal to probability of a intersection b divided by p b now we have p b in the denominator so we can use this theorem to get this done how do you get it done so uh, probability of a given b means probability of a intersection b divided by probability of b so now i cross multiply probability of b is equal to probability of a intersection b divided by probability of a given b now we have all the values we need a intersection b is given 1 out of the 3 divided by a given b 4 out of 9 so the answer is 9 divided by 12 or uh, 3 divided by 4 that is the answer right so fourth one probability of b complement given a we learned this earlier you don't have to uh, memorize these things we can start from the definition so probability of b complement given a as a intersection a divided by b a now this is you know probability of a minus probability of a intersection b divided by p a so right away we know this is equal to 1 minus probability of uh, b given a so we uh, found probability of b given a that was 5 divided by 9 I suppose so 1 minus 5 divided by 9 yeah, 5 divided by 9 that gives us is 4 divided by 9 probability of b complement a is equal to 4 divided by 9 what about this one probability of a complement given b so just by referring to this one we can write away 1 minus probability of a given b so what is that 1 minus 4 divided by 9 that is 5 divided by 9 okay. right. so next one So pause the video here, pause the video here and check whether you can get this by yourself. Right. Okay, now I'm going to write down the solution. So definition would be A complement intersection B complement divided by probability of B complement. So I'm going to use uh, De Morgan's theorem here, probability of uh, a union B complement divided by probability of B complement means 1 minus P B. So this is equal to 1 minus equal uh, complement of something. So 1 minus probability of that something A union B. So we can obtain 1 minus A union B, 1 minus P B. So what was the value? 1 minus, you need uh, PB for this as well. So did we take PB? Probability of B, PB was uh, 3 out of 4, I think. Maybe that was 3 out of 4. Yeah, 3 out of 4. So 1 minus A in B means probability of A. So 3 by 5. Probability of B. 3 out of 4 minus probability of A intersection B that is 1 third that is 1 third then divide by 1 minus 1 minus 3 out of 4 so that value is so uh, <clears throat> once you have calculated uh, your answer you would have noticed that 
you get a negative value. That was my mistake. So when you get a negative value, what does that mean? A probability can never be negative. So it means that's a problem with this equation. So we can say this is, uh, you can say probability of this. This means P A complement given B complement cannot happen. Right? This is not possible. Right? Not possible. That means uh, given not B. So suppose B did not happen, then what is the chance of not A happening? Uh, you get a negative value which is impossible. Right. Right, so we'll do more examples in the class. Thank you for watching.